first time it happened today. That's crazy. <laughs> back and yeah. it is past season two hey another episode and i'm here and you are here what irvin yes. ep pope yes y'all give it a round of applause thank mean, you thank you and we're matching so yeah, I feel you know like what i mean it's just a come, natural come on, vibe it's a natural up. aura I have to. you know <laughs> a little birdie told me that what they say you started out being a producer and whatnot in the church space in I, got the gospel my, space. I got my I got my chops from gospel. From gospel. From gospel. Tell me about that. Okay. Um, growing up in in the church, I okay. have a, a very musical family. Okay. Um, my uncle, which was my dad, which yeah. was a pastor, and okay. at about six years old, he saw that I had the talent to at least pick some songs out on the piano, like single notes. Yeah. So he bought a piano and put it into our project unit. We was the only project unit in the Jordan Downs project to have a upright piano. So he invested, he saw the talent yeah. and invested. And I vowed that since he invested in me and gave me my start, he would never have a musician problem. So, <laughs> so I'm still at the same church today, probably over 40 years, still the wow. musician. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, pay it back, pay it forward. Yeah. And his investment did not clearly go to waste no, at it all. Did. It didn't. I mean, you are a producer, composer, you have your own, you have Grammy. Like, I do. what are we talking about? Not <laughs> Grammy, Grammys. Yeah. You're Emmy nominated. Like, I don't even know where to start. So how about you tell us what was your passion behind music? Was it your family that really influenced you to get into the space? It was, or did you already know? It was a mixture. Okay. It was, I loved music and I loved the fact that I was able to pick sounds out and remember them. Yep. Because 99% of the things that I play is from memory. I can read music, but I'm really slow. So I just like, let me just hear it. And I can hear and I can retain it and I can play it back. Also, growing up, being one of six children, okay. I had to find my place. You yeah. know what I mean? So in growing up mm -hmm. in such a, a rough area, it gave me a little advantage because they knew if, if he knew music, they kind of gave me a pass on a lot of different things. So socially, it helped me a lot. Yeah. as well so yeah a couple motivations what was the first like what was your first gig your first like do you remember the song your first song that you helped compose and produce like what was that first moment first one first one that i got placed i can say that was yeah. in 1999 yeah. which was an artist that was signed to rap a lot um his name was duracell um like the battery right so <laughs> But I got the title song and I got two other songs on his project. So that was that was everything. So he was the first one. And what? right after that, I got to tell you, because not the end with Doris, but right after that was Snoop Dogg. So that kind of. Oh, oh, <laughs> so my mental was like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For people who may not know, what does it mean to be placed? Place or means, your, your means out of thousands of musicians and thousands of, of producers. Yeah. They can only put a certain amount of songs on a CD. So okay. out of 12 songs, I was, I got three songs out of the 12 songs. So I, out yeah. of all the musicians in the world, I was lucky enough to get a song placed on that project. So that's what that means. Yeah, it's half the album. You know what I mean? Yeah. A quarter of it. I mean. The whole thing. <laughs> so in writing a song and producing a song, we mm -hmm. always hear, you know, artists are like, I have my producers, I got my song, mm -hmm. songwriters, all these different elements. What role does a producer play in that space? Just for, you know, well, a producer everyone. is several types of producer. A producer is right. somebody who basically can see something from beginning to the end. I don't really have to play or write. I can say, okay, this musician will sound good with this musician, and okay. this singer will sound good with this, and I see the project all the way through. Like Quincy Jones, for instance, is one of the notable uh, greatest producers ever, and he doesn't really produce. He's a horn player, but he has the wherewithal and the mind state to put the right pieces together to make something out of nothing. Yeah. 
So then even in that, that role where you see it from start to finish, how do you know what finish is, what success looks like? like well, for me, for me, it's a feeling. It's, yeah. it's really no rule to say when something is finished. Yeah. Sometimes we can over, um, overcompensate or we, some things are just simple. Like yeah. you might, the Yin Yang twins, the little whisper song, let me tell you that. It's a kick and a snap. Yeah. The song Grinding from uh, the, the Grinding. exactly, is a kick and a, and a snare. Yeah. That's it. So it doesn't have to be this great, elaborate composition in order to be finished. Yeah. Just depends on the vibe and the feel. What does step one look like? So I'm in high school, I'm, I'm listening and I'm watching this episode and I want to be a producer. What, what is my step one? Step one is to um, find the passion. See okay. if that's where your passion is because a lot of people start and, and the business part of it will deter you from finishing. So find out if this is something that you really want to do. If not, yeah. then it, there's no right or wrong way to start. Yeah. It could be just a hobby. But if you're going to take it serious as a, as a job and a career, yeah. um, I would advise you to see if that's your passion. Okay. And does that look like looking up great producers that are already out? Absolutely. Finding out equipment is another, is another thing. Okay. Because nowadays, all you need is a laptop. Really, like back in the day, I had to buy a keyboard, a mixer, speakers, yeah. um, a bunch of things. Nowadays, kids have it very easy, and they just have a laptop, and, and they're millionaires. Yeah. yeah. What, what are some of those things that you don't learn necessarily, like Google won't tell you, if we can know? What's an yeah. insider, like a, a piece of advice that you've received as a producer that you're like, you, you wouldn't find it on Google. Like you won't, won't, you won't you find that. on Google how to be a people person, okay. how, to, how to stay in a room. Because if I don't like you or if, or if, I, if we clash, yeah. I'm not going to have you back. So yeah. you can be the most talented musician or producer, but if your attitude sucks and nobody really likes you or want to share space with you, then you probably won't be working that much. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us about the college dropout. I, I college mean, dropout. a little birdie told me something about the college dropout. The college dropout, it, it's crazy. Let me tell you the story of how the college dropout came about. I was playing keyboards for Dr. Dre's label for certain A&Rs would call me. Um, when What's an A&R? A, an A&R is, is a rep who is, is responsible for the artist and repertoire. That's what A&R stands for. Um, he basically handles a project that, that enters the inner and the outer parts of a project, putting everything together. But I had a relationship with one. He called me like, look, man, I got this producer in town from Chicago. He needs a musician. Can you, can you go? And I was on my way somewhere and I really didn't want to go. Right. So I'm like, mm. but he's, <laughs> he keeps me working. So yep. I was like, all right, man, I'll go. So I went and there was a little producer named Kanye West that I showed up for. And uh, but this was before his accident or anything. He was a producer, but he wasn't, it wasn't really notable yeah. yet. So I end up, that first session, I end up producing a song that ended up on Jay-Z's um, project, just that very first session. One session? One session. Because I answered a phone call. Yeah. You better answer your yeah. call. You better answer, yeah. you better answer your call. Yeah. Answer call. And I got to say this really quick. I, it yeah. kills me when a business person looks at a phone and say, I don't know that number, so I'm not going to answer it. Well, how are you going to get new business or new money if yeah. you don't answer new calls? So yeah. it's a little, little tip. Yeah, y'all got to sit through the, <laughs> hello, the phone. is this it? Yeah. You got free one? You got, yeah. Until you get that yeah, one, you like, can deal hello? with that to, to get to the bag, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Outside of what you do, mm -hmm. what would you say, like, who would you say you are? Like, who are you outside? I'm a fun loving person who likes to help people and just likes to have a good time. Yeah. That's who I am, basically. How do you separate the two? Like, I don't, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I don't separate it. I mean, I am who I am and I wear, I wear it proudly who I am because I try to be a great person who gives and, and you can never give enough because it's gonna come back to you. Yeah. It just is. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even know if People even realize, I mean, your your catalog. I yeah. mean, we're talking brand, we're talking art. You're, yeah, you're in every genre, have worked with almost every artist, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What is, 
I have to ask. Let's go. Who who was the most fun, or who surprised you the most after you worked with them? Mm, Scarface. Okay. Yeah, Scarface. What, what was the surprise? What, the surprise was like his very last project that he put out, right? Okay. Um, I I co-executive produced that album, but it started off with just a phone call. Somebody recommended me to remake a song, yeah. and then we ended up being friends, and, and his project was the longest project in the world to come out. It was completely independent. Yeah. I was doing things not even knowing if I was ever going to get paid. Um, it was just, mm -hmm. he was one of my favorite artists, and, and for me to have him on the other end of my phone and FaceTiming him yeah. and ha building this relationship um, was everything to me. So mm -hmm. I, I know just for history's sake, I wanted this project to come to life. Um, no matter what the money was and no matter what. And he made me earn every single penny because he does things <laughs> completely the old school way. You're not going to fly. Uh, I, let me use a layman's term. You're not going to just send his music anywhere. You had to physically take it. Okay. Hard drive. I had to drive to, what's the name? I had to fly to Houston. I had to, different things to make that project come to life. It yeah. took five years to come out. But when I tell you I got to exercise Every one of my gifts on that one project, I wrote on it. I sung a little bit on it. I produced. I played on other artists. I did all the, the transitions. I used some of my artists to sing on it. Yeah. Um, I got to ex really exercise every one of my gifts on that project. And we're good friends to this day. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I mean, relationships. Yeah, it's about relationships. It's the new currency. Yeah. It is, it is definitely the new currency. Yeah. You have to make Absolutely. those relationships. Yeah. After you meet the follow-up. It's All those points are everything. pivotal in the past. It's everything. So now you have your own production company. I do. How how do we piece it together? So writer, composer. Yeah. You said you sang on a few of the tracks. Like, yeah, I don't really like to sing, but I do what I I do what I tap dance if I got to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what made you create your own production company? You want me to tell you the truth, or you just want me to tell you something? Oh, we need to keep it real. It's past. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was frustrated in the business about 2008, okay. 2009. Um, I was working with Dr. Dre. I felt like um, with with Dre, and I was doing some stuff for the game, and it was just a frustrating time because I felt I should be doing this and I should be higher and higher and higher. And after mm -hmm. working with Kanye, and I'm like, let me do something that they can't do. I'm gonna do a jazz album. Mm -hmm. And I came out with my first jazz album, and I was like, let me, I need a company to release it on, so I started that. And then it's like, okay, if, if you're complaining about this, why don't you find your own artist, and why don't you start your own artist? Yeah. And I started it um, early on, and I continued, and, and have an artist that was signed to Tech 9 uh, which is the, the the number one independent rap label and rap artist in the world. Um, so my production company really has a distribution situation with that's really big. So um, just seeing your vision out, whatever you think about it, you just got to put the work in and don't limit yourself with time because I thought it would happen a lot sooner. And it yeah. really just a couple of years ago um, came to fruition that, that we really are, are making headway in this industry, and you will hear a lot of stuff coming up very, very soon. Oh, I like that. Y'all have yeah. stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. What's one artist that you haven't worked with yet, but you will be interested, like in the future? I want to work with Billie you? Eilish and I want to work with Adele. Okay, speaking into existence, yeah. we manifest on this day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the affirmations you're telling yourself? Like if you could look at this camera and mm -hmm. tell somebody on the other end, three affirmations. Three. Um, this camera. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, you're fine. <laughs> within, the, within the next five years, I will be an exec in one of these major record companies that will give opportunity that, to people that deserve opportunity and not just based on your numbers. That's one thing yeah. I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, two is I'm going to have a very successful um, foundation yeah. to where I'm giving back and I'm doing great things like you guys are doing here. This is awesome. Um, the, the, the emphasis you're putting on educating the kids from the inner city um, and giving them skills to, to um, take over the world. Yeah. I'm going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to make several superstars 
I'm, I feel like you're not a super producer unless you birth something into the system. Yeah. And I'm going to create some artists that will be here forever. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I have one last question before we turn it over to mm -hmm. the audience. Going from producer into more of the management space, mm -hmm. what are some of those aha moments like? Like you're like, th that was different. It was something I wasn't expecting. Man. Because <laughs> managing people, management yeah. is managing people. You, you really have the artists that you pick, yeah. pick wisely because they are going to become your kids. Okay. Literally, they are. Like you're going to be responsible for them. They don't know. They don't know half of the stuff. They don't know stuff about life. So it's not, you have to separate business and personal because you're teaching them to be responsible human beings at the same time. Yeah. And also to represent something that's gonna last forever. I don't really pick artists that sound and that are the same thing as is on the radio or, or that the world is full of. I wanna create some greatness. No disrespect to what's out, but like I wanna find I want to find what's different and I want to create it. I want to mold it and, and to, to have longevity mm -hmm. and touch people live because the catalog is supposed to stamp time. Yeah. 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 Look, as we make st statements yeah. and stamps in time, I want to make sure I get to the audience. Are there any questions that we want to take? Yes. As one of the mature people in the audience, I can mm -hmm. kind of see your, your passion for really, truly wanting to do this for the, the, you know, our community. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider yourself a, a mentor and would you be willing to mentor you know, someone that is coming to you that is wanting to you know, start their career? I feel like if, if we've amassed any, any form of success and we're from an area, we should give back not just give back, but give back in that area. So I, I have a charge that I definitely will be mentoring. Um, that's why I'm starting the foundation. Um, the Furnace Academy um, Foundation is the affirmation is almost complete. Um, and we will be doing things and giving back on a, on a major level, not just with one or two, but creating programs and opportunities to where we can share it. And, and if, you, if you want it, you can get it and you can be it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really great like point to mention. Yeah. There's mentorship, there's sponsorship, right? Like yeah. the in those two arenas mm -hmm. and being intentional about exactly. your, the own place where you are from. Exactly. Because it, it really because if a person know that you're from where they're from, it it takes on a different meaning of, yeah. of when they say that they can do it too. Yeah. You can't tell me no excuses. I've walked these streets. You can't tell me it was hard because I lived where you're living. Yeah. I've dealt with some of the conditions that, you're, that you've dealt with. And I can offer you some advice that helped me get out. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you, but at least it, it can work. Yeah. And if you try hard and you want it, it can happen. And a person at your level, I feel like people are often reaching out to, all, all to build time. those relationships. I know for some of my mentors, like, yeah. it's a process. Yeah. I think one of my mentors literally gave me all these books. Yeah. She was like, yeah, I want you to read these and send me a book report, like at the end of each one, yeah. right? It was like a very formal process, but that was because she wanted to see if I was going to make the investment in myself first exactly. before she made the investment in time. Yeah. I feel so, like I'm not where I want to be yet, and okay. I still have some reaching up and need some people to yep. reach down. So who am I to not give a hand yep. or at least put somebody on the right path to where they can be successful? I love that. Yeah. Right path. Get on the yeah. right path. Yeah. Yeah. What are you reading right now? Um, the one thing I'm reading is the 22 immutable laws of branding. Okay. That's that's what I'm reading right now. What do you feel like has has revealed itself to you? One thing so is far? like colors, just a little stuff like colors matter mm -hmm. to to stand out in branding and, and, and marketing. There's a reason why McDonald's you can see the sign from miles away. It's yellow and it's red. It's certain colors that the the eye is just attracted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly you are. <laughs> I think we had another question in the audience. Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Simone. Um, you mentioned giving birth to new artists, different mm -hmm. something you haven't seen. Um, could you share a sneak peek of what those artists would look like, some of those character traits, just in your, with your vision? Very, very, the very most, well, the most important thing um, 
And it's just being a dope human being, just being a good person. Uh, that's, we overlook that for talent a lot of times and it unravels down the line because they wasn't a good person anyway. Yeah. So if they're teachable, that's another thing. Talent is, I don't want to say it's so small, but it really is so so small when it comes to doing business with somebody and, and sharing space with somebody and, and them being able to receive information and, and also uh, pick up what you're giving. Outside of the talent is so small when it comes to success. Mm -hmm. So be a dope human being is very first. Mm-hmm. Second, I got, I got to say this week, and be willing to promote yourself. I have some very, very talented artists that won't post. I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And, and that's the way you get in this business. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's no longer that it's, that it's just based on your talent. It's about they want to invest in somebody who is willing to invest in themselves and has done the work to, to make themselves available uh, for for people of all walks to see them. And how can you do that if you won't pick up the phone and just post yourself? If you're not willing to do that, it's probably not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. yeah. I think we got another question. Hey, uh, my name is Kaysen Suggs, but one of the biggest things that stood out to me that you were saying after all the accomplishments and the things that she listed off was that you were saying that you still have more you wanted to accomplish and more you wanted to reach, Absolutely. which really inspired me because I like that mentality of, of understanding where you are and also having more goals. What Absolutely. do you think keeps you going? Because a lot of people get a certain place mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, I'm cool. What do you think it is that separates you? I think it's part of my passion. I think I know why I was created, literally, is to, is to leave something here on this earth that's going to surpass everything that, that I was able to do and to empower other people to do and for you to go further. And, and how can I get this and still have all this knowledge and experience and not share it? So if, if I just sit on it now at this point and feel like I've arrived, it's, it's, it's so much more living to do and so much more things to do. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Amen. Um, so like many creatives, we've always had these moments where we're like on the floor with our confidence. Mm -hmm. Maybe we took a big loss or maybe we just don't have the energy to keep going. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody who's looking for more energy, but doesn't know where to pull? Um, it all stems back to when I said passion, if you're passionate about it. And that's why I said that earlier, because you will run out of gas. This business will beat you up just like any other business, corporate will beat you up. Anything that you're gonna do and you're gonna succeed, you're gonna be met with opposition. So if you're gonna go the long haul, just understand what, what in whatever business you're in, know, know the ins and outs and what it's gonna take. And so you can identify when you run into some of those brick walls that like, oh, at least I got at least three more brick walls to go. I don't have a million to go through. Just recognize where you are and, and, and it's okay to, to, to recalibrate and to take a break for a minute, but don't ever give up. If you, if you give up, you wasn't really meant to do this. That's really what I feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's a good segue, because I think mm -hmm. we spoke earlier about just like working corporate or you know mm -hmm. having a, a nine to five job yeah. and then having that night grind. Absolutely. And that, that can get exhausting. Yeah. When did you know it was time to fully put, pivot into? That's, that's a great question. Yeah. I, was, I was working for, a space and defense company, which is Northrop Grumman, which was formerly oh, wow. TRW. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a good job. I, it, back then, I was, think I was making about 80000 a year. Yeah. And people thought I was crazy because I, I was willing to just walk away from that. And we were talking about yep. how do you know when? But I'm literally at my cubicle, and I'm listening to one of my songs on the radio. And it happened to be a song from Neo. Um, I don't get down like that. I'm producing from his, from, yeah, <laughs> yeah, from his, his debut album. And I'm sitting at my cubicle and it comes on the radio and the boss is just this and this. It's like, you know what? I got to jump by the iron is hot. I have to. Yeah. yeah. So I, I asked them to lay me off and uh, they were like, lay you off. <laughs> Please fire yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, I want them to lay me off so I can get a little <laughs> unemployment. I can stretch it out a little bit. But uh, they were like, what? So I found, let me, I found another creative way to get out of it. Let me just say that. You know? <laughs> and I, <laughs> 
And I was out. That's I knew. I knew at that point. And I gave that job 10 years. But it was good to me. I, I, yeah. And some people are still there today, but I just knew, like, it was just calling me. Sometimes it's just in you, you just know. Like, yeah. I was willing to do that during the daytime so I can sustain my lifestyle. But at, the, at night, I had to roll my sleeves up and go get it. So I would work um, doing television stuff um, and a bunch of stuff at night and working with Kanye and a bunch of stuff while I had a nine to five. But so it, you was it taking takes, a work yeah. computer on the road, like <laughs> exactly. I was I was on the road. I was getting it. So, were there any moments during that path where you felt like you started to doubt it, right? Like get a little scared. Maybe work wasn't coming as fast um, as you were maybe used to, and you started to be like, I I don't know. Maybe I need to I promise, go back. I promise you, there was a, there was never a time that I doubt. Yeah. Maybe I just, it's just in me. Yeah, I didn't doubt it. Sometimes it it, it hurts. Yeah. that you don't have or that these bills is coming in and you don't have it and it, even yeah. to this day i'll be lying to you and tell you i always had it i don't have it every day even now yeah it gets hard it's up and down but but i've been fortunate enough to to work with some people who really really have it and we started off at the same time like tde i did a bunch of stuff for tde and kendrick and j-rock and all them like i used to play keys for them and all that so to see where they are, it's just a matter of time. I know my time is coming. And I'll, I've always felt like that. And door after door after door after door opens. They don't always open in a sequence. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I got to go around this way and this way. But it, it's going to happen. If you quit, same thing like the gym. It's a byproduct of it. If you lift weights, at the end of the day, you're going to get muscle. Yeah. It has to happen. But if I quit, it ain't going to happen. What are some of those things outside of industry that you pour into yourself? You mentioned the gym, so I'm like, working yeah, out. Yeah, working, you know. It's a day and in a, the life, and just, me through. Day in the life, like, I do about three and a half, to four miles, at least four times a, uh, four times a week, um, four days a week. Yeah. Um, and that happened when the pandemic came. It's like, let me do something to strengthen my lungs, because I want to be here. I don't want to mass all this and then go out. It's yeah. like, so I figured, Figure that out. I, I do that. I find enjoyment in that now, doing some trails by my house. Um, um, after that, I hit the studio. I'm in the studio probably 12 hours a day still. Yeah. And then if I'm not doing that, it's time to do a live gig or I tour. I'm, I'm the game's tour manager, not tour manager, but his musical director. I tour the world with the game probably at least once a year. We do Europe and Dubai and and um, supposed to go to Korea next week. So I'll figure that out. But um, <laughs> But it literally, like, my life is just, it's all over the place, and I love it, so I'm not bored. And, and then as soon as I get tired of doing that, oh, Sunday's here, and I got to go to church, and I got to go give back because yeah. I ask him for so much that on Sunday I got to go give back to the one who gave me the gift. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, praise, we can do that yeah. all day. Y'all yeah. already know how I feel. Yeah. So I'm curious, what... What is some advice you would say for somebody looking to get into the studio or about to go to the studio with a producer? What do mm -hmm. they need to prepare? Like, have your lyrics, is it have your lyrics prepared? Yeah. Have your, yeah, yeah give us, yeah. give us something to teach you. We see people spend it, wasting Number money one, in the be studio. willing to invest, be willing to invest in yourself. There you go. Number one, don't ask me to, to I get, I hate when people come on my live, man, I'll kill that beat. Okay, I'll kill that check. You said, <laughs> you know what I mean? So be willing to, <laughs> be willing to invest in yourself, yep. number one, because once, once you start other people investing into you, mm -hmm. it's, it's a slap in the face when you quit, when you give up. Yeah. It really is. Um, be prepared when you get to the studio, be prepared. I send people beats and they get to the studio. All right, turn it on. Let me write to it. Why did I send it to you? Yeah. <laughs> That's important. Be, prepa be prepared. Be on time. Be early. Yep. To be early is to be on time. Yeah, exactly. Be time because be a lot of people will judge you based on your tardiness. Yep. And I don't want to hear I was in traffic. Okay, you should have planned for the traffic. Absolutely. Because time is everything. Yep. So those are a few. I can go on and on and on, and on but those Absolutely. are a few. <laughs> Timing <Yeah. laughs> for one of the founders of the show. Uh, Definitely. How you doing, Mr. Pope? I have a how question. You doing, what is your definition? of a film composer, and what is a film composer's duties? Great question. Film composer. Um, I, a film composer is responsible 
film composer is responsible for the mood in the, in the pulse of the, the film. Um, for instance, if it's a sad scene, I'm supposed to know how to go to some strings and give you some dark chords. Mm -hmm. Or if it's an action scene, I'm supposed to give you some rock or give you, you're just responsible for the, the texture of the music in the show. So you, you would watch a film mm -hmm. in, and not in silence, but in just the words, the dialogue that the actors have, and you'll decide based on the, the written dialogue, the tone that has to be expressed so the audience knows how to feel, essentially. Absolutely. And, and sometimes, um, sometimes the directors are very involved in it, and I like, a lot, I like it a lot more when they're not, because it gives me a lot more, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Freedom. It gives me a lot more freedom to yeah. just sit and really like, because I really love to do that. And, and I, I love film because I get to really use all, all genres in one piece. One scene, if, I, if it's a bar, I'm gonna play some blues. Or if it's something, like I said, if it's, if it's action or extreme sports, I'm gonna play some rock stuff. Or if it's, I'm gonna give you some ambient stuff when it's just small dialogue. So, so film composing is really rewarding for somebody who really is into their craft. And the, and Lucas. go ahead. <laughs> and, and the literal, the, the last piece to this question is, difference in the person that puts songs in films in the moments versus the sounds yes. is there a different title and if so yes. can you explain the difference between those two that person is normally called a music supervisor and they and they reach out to producers or their producer themselves and they they um, license music to add to to whatever film or television show that is and composers they actually make or someone that does the score or compose it, they actually add the, the music into it as well, custom to whatever the scene is. Yes. OK, well, I have a question. OK. So I've heard composer, uh -huh. producer, mm -hmm. film composer, yeah. music supervisor. Uh -huh. Then you just mentioned musical director yeah. and on tour. Yeah. What? How do you get into that? Like, what is that? What I is got, a musical director? I'm like, isn't it the artist I'm, who just showed yeah, up? Yeah, musical plays director songs? is I'm in charge of the band. I have a band. Okay. The Furnace Band. Shout out to the Furnace Band. Shout out to the Furnace Band. And um, I'm in, like, game approaches me and says, look, I want to do this song, this song, this song on this, on this set. When we get here, we're going to do this. And he gives me the direction. I yep. direct the band. Yeah. I say, when the drummer is going too crazy, hey, I control the tempo and in, in the pulse okay. for the show. Yeah. Yeah, so. So someone looking to do that, what, mm -hmm. what would they do? What's like two steps that they could start to build their um, resume and get that experience? Get a great relationship with the artist. With the artist, okay. Which is, which is everything because, and, and this is, I'm, I, he may not mind me saying it or not, but he, Game doesn't really like to rehearse. Okay. So I've been playing for him probably about eight years. Eight or nine years, and we've had three rehearsals. But to make sure that we're tight, I make sure I rehearse with the band, and we just got to go every over everything. Yeah. Just to make sure whatever he calls, we're able to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah. essential. I think we got so. another question in the audience. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. My question is for your new gig. Mm -hmm. You're working with the game. Mm -hmm. He just dropped a new album. Mm -hmm. It is very different than a lot of his other albums, mm -hmm. where he takes on different styles and different things of different artists. Mm -hmm. How much of that is a collaborative effort between the artist and you? Well, I didn't work on this album. Um, I, I haven't worked on his albums for probably several years. I worked on the first three albums. But whatever his album is, he gives us a list of what he wants to perform, and it's normally a single or something else, but predominantly his shows are filled with his classic stuff, stuff from documentary and the first two or three albums, especially overseas. They love the old school hip hop. So he may fuse a couple of different songs and he'll just give us those, those songs to add to, to the list for the show, yeah. and we never know. It changes, some, some days it is like, I wanna add this song, I wanna add this song from this person, or uh, a song that's hot and from Roddy Rich or something. And then we'll just do it and he'll just rap over that too. So you just gotta be professional and prepared. How much of that do you have creativity in when he's picking all the things, but you still have to set it up a certain way 
to be presented, where does your creativity come into that? Well, we just have to know it. And then he kind of guides us on when to start and when to stop. And we get to be creative at the beginning of the show because we set the tempo. Uh, we may do three or four songs and we really give it to the audience. And then by that time he comes out and then it's pretty structured after that. He may call us out and give us a solo or here or there, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty structured after the show starts. Mm -hmm. Are there any classes that a student can take to learn how to be a producer? You know what? I have some great friends. Um, we at, like names. <laughs> Lawrence Dobson okay. and, and James Fontleroy at 1500 um, Sound Academy, and they are really teaching step by step. Um, how to produce, yeah. how to play, how to write. It's, it's really a, a very impressive operation yeah. and, and you could definitely tap in to those guys. Very knowledgeable. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My last question. What questions are you asking yourself right now? Um, let me ask myself a question right now. <laughs> when can we do this again? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Round of applause, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we got seasons. Yeah. We got seasons. Season yeah. Three, four, five. I'm speaking it into yeah, exactly. existence. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thanks for, for coming this today. Like, we really appreciate him, don't we? This all? is fun. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. I mean, you broke it down. Yeah. Today. There's yeah. just no. We didn't have enough time. For that's all right, that's why I said we got to do it again. Absolutely. <laughs> part two. Coming yeah. Soon. Part two. Uh -huh. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Past Season Two. Urban Pope, EP, hey. y'all, I ain't even got to say it. Y'all better have took notes. We, we better be better by next yeah, season. Exactly. Let's clap it up, clap it up.